Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop, your weekly show all about getting more from Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to take a look at how to crop an image non-destructively. If you caught our episode last week, you would have learned how to actually crop your image to a particular size. Well, that's great, but if you throw away the picture parts, they're going to be gone. So when you close and save the file, those cropped parts are no longer part of your photo. And that could be bad. That's why I want to teach you how to non-destructively crop. This will allow you to crop a photo and then essentially change your mind afterwards. Here's how it works. When you open up a photo into Photoshop, by default, the image is locked and it's called a background layer. This is because it's a single layered file. If we double click, we can actually name that and I'll just call this park. Now, this photo is a pretty good photo. Unfortunately, the composition is just a bit off. We have two children looking at each other here, but one of the children is mostly cut off, and we also have a distracting person behind on their cell phone. Now, I'm going to grab the crop tool. Shortcut is C, or we can click and choose it from the well. And let's go ahead and load in a preset. We'll do a 5 by 3 inch print. Now, I don't want the width at 5 by 3, so I'll click here to switch that to a 3 by 5 and we'll start to click and draw. That works pretty well. I could reposition this and it gives you an idea of what's going to fit. Let's favor just a little bit more here where we see his hands and he's looking to the right. Now if you look up top in the options bar we have two choices of what to do with the cropped area. This is an important decision to make. If you are absolutely sure that you want to discard those pixels you could choose the delete option. But for many of you, flexibility will be important as you start to work with digital images. I highly recommend choosing the hide option. By choosing hide, we can go ahead and apply the crop. But if we change our mind, no big deal. We can use the move tool to move that image around within. Notice we could reposition within the original frame now, if there was nothing above it, we can't use that, but this is still pretty flexible. If you completely change your mind, it's no big deal. Let's go ahead and save this file and actually close it. Now, I'm going to open that image back up by choosing File, Open Recent, and bringing it back to life. The image definitely appears cropped, but if we change our mind and we've cropped it non-destructively, we can bring it back. All we need to do is choose Image, Reveal All, and all of those cropped pixels come back. This sort of flexibility is crucial. Oftentimes, you will crop a photo and then show it to a client or to someone for reaction, and they won't agree with the crop. By doing a non-destructive crop, this works fine. Remember, make sure it is an actual layer by double clicking on the background and naming it. Then make your crop with the crop tool and select the hide option, not the delete option. Cropping is essential. I hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. We're going to explore one more cropping technique next week when we talk about a perspective crop. If you'd like to find out more tutorials or information about digital imaging in general, check out our blog at rastervector.com and consider picking up our new book, Understanding Adobe Photoshop CS4 from Peachbit Press. We've got a discount code here. You can use at their website, which will drop the price down. And once you have the book, they'll let you get access to all the images we use in the show so you can get more hands-on practice. Thanks again.